This video is sponsored by Major Dairy AI Services Limited. Eddie and I are on our way to tour Eddie's cousin's barn, and we thought we would bring you guys along for something different. They milk about 15, 10 or 15 cows more than us, and they have De Laval robots, which is another robot style. There are three main styles. Geo, which is what we have. Uh, Lely, which is probably the leading, most popular brand. And then De Laval, which we did check out. And I kind of feel like when you meet a farmer and you're like, oh, what's your milking situation? Like, what kind of facility do you milk in? And they say, oh, well, we have robots. And then it's kind of like this awkward, like, well, what, what kind do you have? And then it's like, oh, and then, then you say what kind do you have? And I feel like it's almost like asking, well, who did, who did you vote for? Or like, <laughs> well, what? What sports team do you cheer for? Like, and then you say like oh, the Leafs. Oh, the Leafs suck! Like, <laughs> I don't know. You don't. You don't usually get that kind of pushback. It's usually just kind of like hands in the pockets. Like, oh, okay, cool. <laughs> and then you just move on to something else. Do you feel like that? A little bit. A little bit yeah. yeah. So I'll show you how those robots work. I'll take you along. They just built a new shop, so we'll tour that with you guys. And yeah, a new heifer barn a couple of years ago. Okay, a new heifer barn. I didn't even remember that and we'll see if we can get Eddie's cousin on camera he says he has a he says he has a face for radio so <laughs> we'll see how willing he is to be on camera but he didn't say no when we asked if we could bring along the camera so so we'll see what comes of it Dave brother Dave who you met in this video and Stephen's not coming no Stephen's not coming to this. Dave's coming though and we're hoping he brings his family along do you have the sea heaters on what? I don't have heat seaters. Heat seaters? You don't have heat seaters? <laughs> seat heaters. You bought a truck without seat heaters? That is yeah, surprising. Pretty low class here. <laughs> wow. Making the donut run. Another thing we want to share with you guys, and we thought this would be a good opportunity to do so, is the promise we made to you when we reach 5,000 subscribers, we are going to release a unique video. I have it all filmed. My dad works at JLOR, the TMR mixing company, so they make feed mixers for cows, and he gave us an exclusive tour, a behind the scenes tour of JLOR and how they make their mixers, what sets them apart from all the rest. And it was really neat. We brought Dave and Steven along for that tour, filmed it all. It's all packaged up for you guys. So help me get to 5,000 and I will release that video for you. Eddie's cousin John and his wife Kim are an example of a true dairy farming success story. John and Kim were among the first in Ontario to use Dairy Farmers of Ontario's new entrant program which helps new producers get into the dairy industry, which is also what Eddie and I used. They purchased their farm in 2009 and moved on to it 30 minutes away from home with their three young children. 
They quickly began barn renovations to make the existing buildings on the property work for them. They installed one Du Laval robot right from the start and began milking 35 cows the following year in 2010. They have been buying dairy quota on the exchange monthly since then and are gradually growing their herd. When they were looking into barn designs and deciding which type of milking system to use, robotic milking was new in southwestern Ontario. After touring a few robotic milking facilities, they decided a robot would be a good fit for them since their children were very young and the robot would allow for flexibility as well as room to grow into their facility. <laughs> it's unbelievable. If that was a human robot, that would be so inappropriate. I can't say I've seen it quite like that. That's extreme. But... In 2020, they hit maximum capacity on their first robot, so they bit the bullet and added a second used Dillaval robot and therefore started milking with two robots. They quickly found by installing the second robot, the cows went up in milk production, which allowed them to decrease the number of cows they were milking, and therefore were still able to grow their herd. They also noticed the udder health of their cows improved by their somatic cell counts decreasing because the cows were getting milked more often. Hoof health also improved because the amount of time they were standing waiting to get milk drastically decreased. The cows can now comfortably get milked whenever they want, eat their feed, grab a drink of water, and lay down to continue the cycle of making milk. This has reduced the amount of stress on both the cows and the farmers tremendously. As we tour through their dairy barn, it is easy to witness firsthand the relaxed nature of the cows. Some of the biggest delights they have encountered during their life as dairy farmers have been watching their kids grow up on the farm and now they've become a big help and it's neat to see their desire to be involved in the farm. They have enjoyed seeing their farm evolve into what it is today. They have focused on trying to improve their genetics and production over the years and now they can see the fruits of their labor paying off. They also enjoy the day-to-day -day little things like the birth of a heifer who will grow up to join her mother and grandmother in the milking herd as well as have babies of her own. Major challenges they've faced as dairy farmers have been the inability to take time off, which can become very tiring. This is not only physically draining, but can also be mentally draining. As a dairy farmer, even with robots, contrary to what some believe, you are on call 24 hours a day, seven days a week, meaning the robot could wake you up in the middle of the night. And speaking from experience, when you have so much tied up on the farm financially, taking time away is not always an option. John and Kim's most recent addition is the shop we started off in. It was built in 2023 and they are now able to go over each piece of equipment throughout the winter months. They do most equipment maintenance on their own so the shop has provided a comfortable place to work in. It also provides additional storage for straw and equipment which was greatly needed. We're really enjoying this tour. If you are too, I encourage you to please like the video. This helps us out. So this is what John uses to kind of like chews the feed up from the bunk, makes it finer, and then the TMR mixer does it just mixes the feed rather than like chop it up. Yeah. And then a good way to keep a clean face yeah, clean on the It's very straight, clean. Yeah. Keeps it from heating up. Yeah. Oh, I think they're a must. Yeah, because if you just like dig into the to the bunk with like a regular bucket, then it's like a bunch of like, you'll get more spoilage. Yeah, because you're lifting it and you get air yeah. pockets. And yeah, especially yeah. in the summertime. Yeah. Uh, with a lever in the tractor and run the hydraulics and that'll spin this. And there's a motor here, right there. One on each side. Okay. And that's what's running this. And then that'll go. Yeah, like our TMR mixer still has knives in it, right? So yeah. it'll still chop make up whatever this doesn't like yeah. make fine, but yeah. Cool. When the summer months roll around and field work comes again, the costers do all their field work on their own except for spraying, and it is a big family effort especially during harvest time. For example, for hay harvesting, they cut their hay with a tractor and disc vine, 
And then when it is time for the hay to be merged, they use a tractor and merger to put two rows into one. Then they come along with a tractor and pull type harvester while pulling a high dump behind. The hay gets blown into the high dump, and when the high dump is full, they have another tractor and dump trailer to empty into. The tractor and dump trailer then proceed to the feed bunk to unload where it is packed with a loader tractor to prevent air pockets and feed spoilage. Once the feed bunk is full, they cover it with plastic and place tires on top. So whether the job is driving, doing the barn chores, covering feed bunks, or making and delivering meals to the fields, the whole family works together to get the job done. As their herd grew, they began to outgrow their heifer facility. So in 2018, they built a brand new heifer barn. They decided to have straw pack on the far side and a scrape alley off the spacious drive through feed alley. They installed turkey curtains for natural ventilation and went with this design because they felt this was a comfortable and simple setup for the heifers, which would allow for space for continuous growth. They currently have extra space in their heifer barn, which allows them to raise all of their bull calves for veal rather than sell them to a veal farmer like Eddie and I do. So, so how many heifers you got in here? Um, I think we're right around the 65 to 70 mark right now. So how many heifers you got in here, John? Huh? We got about 60 in here right now. So. 60? Yeah. Okay. Yep. Like eight pens with six or eight. Of pens. heifers, there's eight pens of heifers. Yeah, okay. that's right. If you're enjoying this farming content, I encourage you to please subscribe to our channel. It helps our channel out and helps more people to find us. And subscribing can also help you find our videos, especially if you turn that bell notification to on. It has been a pleasure to tour John and Kim's milking facility and we are so glad we got to share this tour with you.